me a Parsha story. Welcome to Parsha Pals. Meet Yoni. Yoni is nine years old and is going to be going to sleepaway camp for the first time tomorrow. The camp is called Camp Moria, and he's going to be there for four weeks. First time ever going to camp. It was the night before he was leaving, and as he snuggled up in his bed, he was thinking about all the things that lie ahead, like spending time with friends and playing baseball. Baseball was his favorite. He knew that would be a really fun part of camp for him because something you need to know about Yoni is that even though he was only nine years old, his pitching arm was so strong, he actually pitched those balls like a 12-year-old. They would pop with the speed as he pitched them. He was excited to be going to camp along with other friends and knew that he did not have an opportunity to swim and have lots of fun outdoors. Yoni woke up the morning that camp started. His parents drove him to the bus. He gave them big hugs goodbye and hopped on the bus with his friends and with some counselors. After a long ride, all of the buses pulled into camp. And as the kids filed off the buses and walked toward their bunk, Yoni had a chance to start meeting the boys that were in his bunk and his counselors. And they were all nice. After eating lunch and unpacking, the bunk went up to the basketball courts to shoot around a little bit. Yoni was excited to improve his jump shot throughout the summer. While it didn't require too much effort for him to shine on the baseball field because of his strong arm, basketball was an area that he was working to improve a little bit. His days were filled with fun. Swimming, rock climbing... Baseball. On the 14th day of camp, the head counselor Yisrael announced a letter writing contest. (music) Yisrael wanted to encourage kids to be writing letters to their parents. So he said, every camper needs to write at least one letter home. And it can't just say, hi, mom. It has to have at least four lines. And whichever bunk wrote the most letters could get some extra canteen. Canteen is where they have candy in camp. So that was a very good motivator for this. Yoni got right to work. Dear Abba and Ima, camp is great. Nice kids, great sports. We learn Torah every day. I miss you. And my bed. And then Yoni decided to write a little poem about the fact that he was missing his bed and his room. Hey there, room, I'll soon be back. Counting down, that's a fact. Under soft covers, I'll sleep so tight in my own bed. Everything's just right. P.S. Please send some chocolate and strawberry licorice. I love you, Yoni. Yoni actually liked the way his poem sounded, and he would sometimes chant it throughout the day, most often at night when he was trying to fall asleep. Because while camp was lots of fun, it's a little more rugged than home. The mattresses aren't quite as thick. The bunk is noisy with lots of people. It's not the same as sleeping in your own room. It's not worse. It's just different. And one thing that Yoni missed about home was his bed and his room. Well, a week later, Yoni received a letter back from his parents. Dear Yoni, you're quite the poet. We are glad that you're enjoying camp. How often do you get to play baseball? The house is quiet and we miss you. Bubby sprained her ankle badly while she was exercising. She's a trooper hobbling around with crutches, even managing steps. Baruch Hashem, it's not anything too serious, but we're sure that a letter from you will lift her spirits. She'll be happy to see you the day you get home next week. 
You arrive home on Friday, and she'll be staying with us for Shabbat and then for two more weeks until her ankle is fully healed. We love you, Abba and Ima. Yoni really liked getting mail from home. He decided that he would write a letter to his bubby right away to wish her a refua shalema and to tell her a little bit about camp. Dear Bubby, how are you feeling? I'm so sorry that you hurt your ankle. And then he put his pen down and stopped writing for a moment. He was struck with a dilemma. What should he do? He was going to be arriving home from camp on Friday, as his parents wrote in the letter, and Bubby was going to be joining them for how long? For two weeks. Now, Bubby usually sleeps downstairs in the guest room. My parents wrote in the letter that she is managing with crutches and even hobbling up steps. The guest room is so far from my parents' room, and I'll have been away for so long for a whole month in camp, and I don't really like sleeping in that guest room, but it would be so much better for Bubby to be upstairs so she wouldn't have to manage the steps, but I really want to sleep in my own bed. I love my room and my bed so much, and I've been dreaming about being under those soft covers, sleeping so tight. Because when I'm in my own bed, everything is right. What should I do? Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Yes, I can. Yoni picked his pen right back up. I miss you, Bubby, and my bed. I'm so excited to see you when I get back next week. And... I wrote this poem just for you. Bubby, your ankle hurts. You need your rest. You can have my room. It's truly the best. On the couch, I'll sleep without a fuss. As long as you are comfy, that's a must. Counting down the days until I get to see you, Bubby. Hope you might have some strawberry and chocolate licorice for me when I get back. Love you. Yoni. Yoni looked at his poem and he felt that really good feeling of satisfaction of having made a good choice. It was the day before camp was over and Yoni received another letter from his parents, probably the last one for the summer. Dear Yoni, we're counting down the days until you get home. We have a feeling that you may come home from camp with a trophy for sports, perhaps baseball. We want you to know that Bubby received your letter and read it to us. Your poetry is getting quite good. The fact that you offered your bed to her for this Shabbat and for the time that she'll be staying in our house so that she could be upstairs is something that should make you feel proud. After all, you haven't been in your own bed for so long, and the day you get back from camp, You're giving your bed away. That's what we call good sacrifice. And in our eyes is worth even more than any trophy or anything that comes easily to you. That night, the last night of camp, after the banquet and after all of the goodbye celebrations, music, singing, dancing, an awards ceremony. Yoni did receive the trophy for best baseball player when he got into his bed, which wasn't so comfy. Before he said Shema, he was thinking in his head, hey there, room, I'll soon be back. Counting down, that's a fact. Under soft covers, I'll sleep so tight. In my own bed, Everything's just right. He smiled to himself and continued, Bubby, your ankle hurts. You need your rest. You can have my room. It's truly the best. On the couch, I'll sleep without a fuss. 
as long as you are comfy, that's a must. In Parashat Titzaveh, we learn about the fact that the Kohanim wore four special clothes and the Kohen Gadol wore eight of them. One of the special things that the Kohen Gadol wore was called the Choshen Mishpat. It was square and folded. Aaron wore it on his heart. Aaron had a very big heart. He wasn't jealous of his brother Moshe, who was the leader, even though Moshe was his younger brother. He tried with his heart to always bring peace to other people. And on that Choshen Mishpat that Aaron wore on his heart, there were 12 very precious stones. Where did these stones come from? The Bnei Israel were in the desert. According to some opinions, they were brought out of Mitzrayim with them. According to Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmani, these precious stones fell from the Shamayim, fell from heaven, together with the special food Hashem provided for Bnei Israel in the desert. That yummy, yummy man. The Orachaim HaKadosh explains that because the clouds, the special ananim that escorted us, brought down these special stones, these avnei shoham, they came directly from Hashem, directly from the heavens. Wow, that is so special. That shows Hashem's love for us and for the Kohanim. But the fact that these stones came from Shamayim, came down from the Ananim, came down with the man, they didn't require Torah or Yigiyah. They did not require sacrifice or effort. They came very easily. It didn't require stretching. And Arachayim explains that's why they're listed last in the order of all of the things that were brought in last week's Parsha. So we see that the Choshen that the Kohen Gadol wore carries the stones that were miraculously brought to us. They were special and they were beautiful. And in life, Things that require effort are even more special. That is why the other donations to the Mishkan are listed earlier than these magnificent stones. In our lives, we all have things that come easily to us, different talents. Somebody might be very good at drawing and somebody else at math somebody else at reading, and somebody else might be fabulous at basketball. Something we learn from these stones is that there are gifts that are given directly to us, and those are beautiful and wonderful. And then there are gifts that we have to develop and that require even more effort on our part. Yoni did not need to exert a lot of effort to play baseball well for Yoni the sacrifice that he made of sharing his bedroom and his bed and giving it to his grandmother to sleep in. Wow, that exertion, that effort shows a lot for Yoni. And I hope that this lesson that we learned from this week's Parsha of the importance of extending ourselves and stretching ourselves in areas that might not be so easy for us is something that we can integrate into our lives. And may our efforts to do so serve as a zechut for our beloved chayalim and our brothers and sisters in Israel. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.